In this video, I want to share with you a couple of natural ways to create content. And I, as, I, as I talk about these, I invite you to rank each of these as on a scale of 0 to 10 for yourself. Oh, 0 meaning, oh, this would not be natural for me. And 10 would be, oh, this is going to go right into my natural rhythm of work or my, my natural rhythm of my day. So let's, go, let's get started. Uh, the first way of creating great content is if you serve clients right now, if you regularly do client sessions, take notes after, it, after each client session, even if it's just for three minutes, scribbling down okay, what um, was a, a, an insight that my client had that was very helpful for her. Um, or what insight did I share with my client that was especially transformational for him. Um, if you uh, don't want to write, you can even try recording it, recording it using your phone, the audio, just kind of talk it out. Okay, what insight was particularly useful for them or what process did I work through with them that was uh, particularly beneficial or really improved something for them uh, or uh, what issue did I really help them resolve in this session? Okay, so if you regularly work with clients, really consider doing this because uh, um, you can really get some golden nuggets out of each client session that could then be shared in a blog post or in a video, of course, keeping your clients anonymous, but sharing the general insight or the exercise you did or the problem and how you resolved it. Um, because remember, uh, when you share content that is about solving your client's problems, you, number one, help other clients who have that problem. Okay, you could share that content with them. But number two, you are helping people who could become your clients. And typically when people you know, consume content and it helps them solve a problem, sometimes they go ahead and solve the problem with your content and they get so excited and they share your website and your content with other people. Sometimes they read it or they watch it and they say, you know what, I would like personal handholding uh, on doing what th this video says or this blog post you know, was, is talking about. So then they'll, they'll seek you out. So that's a very useful way to create content is uh, taking a moment after each client session or at least after one client session a, a day uh, to write down the notes, to record it, or even to do a video, or to do a mind map, or however you want to um, get the insights down, okay? Um, so how, how, how well would that work for you? Zero, not at all, 10, would that would be perfect. All right, go ahead and jot that down. The second natural way of creating content that has been very useful for me and for a, a lot of people I've introduced this idea to is to get interviewed. Get interviewed. Now, what I don't, it doesn't mean that you have to be, you have to get um, accepted to be interviewed on a telesummit or uh, on, in a conference or on a podcast. You can simply ask someone who is a friend or a colleague to interview you, okay? Uh, it could be someone you live with or see frequently, okay? And when I say interview, I mean have them ask you questions about your field that you would answer. Uh, for many of us, it's easier to answer questions in a conversation than it is to give a lecture. Uh, now, I'm, I'm a bit different because I've been practicing talking about these kinds of issues for seven years, so it's very natural for me to do these kinds of videos than to kind of give a little bit of a lecture but maybe for you, uh, it's easier to just answer questions, right? And so it could, be, it could be someone you live with or someone you see frequently. It could be someone you meet in a Facebook group. Uh, maybe you could even swap with them. One of the groups that I always love to recommend people check out is called Wisdompreneurs. I'll put a link in the, uh, in the notes of this video to that group. I recommend uh, checking it out and joining it and maybe asking to swap um, being an interview partner with someone or multiple someones. Um, it could be a client, okay? It could be uh, someone you just love working with. Uh, they always have such, such great questions that get you to share your insights 
and you could say, hey, you know what? Um, maybe you could trade with them. Say, hey, could, could we do a session where you just ask me as many questions as possible and I'll share it and, and do a recording? Um, or it could be over the interview, if they don't want to be recorded, could be over uh, email. Okay, so they could email you a question, you write it out, and then you collect these emails and turn it into a blog post and then make it into a video later, etc. Uh, so, um, and then you could trade and say, hey, if you do this, I'll, I'd be glad to give you an extra session, you know, free of charge, things like that. So that's the second way is getting interviewed. Third way is to comment in groups. Um, so if you like to take part in Facebook groups or in LinkedIn groups, Okay, just two examples of where you can engage online. Um, groups where you love to answer questions, where you share your expertise, that's the idea. And um, if you do that regularly already, why not gather your comments and see if you can edit them, or curate them, collect them, and, and combine them into a blog post or something you could turn into a video uh, with that kind of content. Um, one of my friends, um, Tomar Levine, she is just brilliant uh, when, she, when I see her commenting on, in various groups and even just on Facebook in general. She just creates some of the most amazing writing to me. And so I, that's why I encourage her to do that and uh, she's putting that together into some blog posts. I will put a link uh, in the notes of this video that will give you a single link that will bring you to all of your own comments on Facebook in the various groups and in various places. It's called the All Activity um, page. This is private just to yourself. And so you could, you could click on it and each one of us will be able to see our private activity to see all our comments and, and start to collect them. Um, okay, and then the fourth way for a natural way of creating content is if you love to read uh, books or articles, um, why not summarize what you've read? Okay, you could do that either in a blog post, maybe you could, uh, if you'd love reading articles, for example, you could write a blog post summarizing three to five articles you've read on a particular topic in your field, uh, and then adding your own thoughts to it to say, okay, I, what I loved about these three articles was uh, they talked about this and about that, and they had this good idea, that good idea, but what I felt was missing uh, was this or this, or what I could add from my own experience and my own client work is this or this or this, or this story or that story. So summarizing, the way I do it is I summarize books that I've read in my field of business and marketing and, and personal growth. And in, and in fact, um, some of my most uh, well, most my most viewed videos have been summaries of books that I've read. And the, and I think the reason why is because when I summarize the book, I, I you know in a video I'll put summary of you know, deep work by Cal Newport, you know, a book title and then the author's name. So when people are searching that author's name or they're searching that book, they'll see as one of the videos, oh, a summary of the book and the author, uh, by, by that uh, summary of the book, right? Uh, the book written by the author. Well, uh, maybe I'll just save some time and, and watch the summary instead of, instead of uh, you know, taking 10 hours to read the book, right? Or in addition to. So summarizing would, is a great way to, um, to also establish your credibility as an expert because people see that you are, um, you, you've studied, you've done your research, okay? And then the fifth um, way of naturally creating content is to look at what uh, daily activity you're already doing where you could be creating content in, during that activity. A couple examples. If you regularly commute on a train or on a bus uh, or if someone else is driving, um, or if you take plane rides a lot, well, those are good times to create content because you are uh, essentially captive in that environment. You can't really go anywhere right then. So you might as well take out a, a, a quick uh, piece of paper and start jotting down some content ideas, okay? Or another example is I walk my dog buddy every day and one day I was walking him and I was in a dog park and you know, I was waiting for him to run around and have fun. And usually I would just kind of, I would just kind of stand there and look, you know, surf the web on my phone or you know, read something on my phone. And I thought that day, you know, um, a, question, a, a client recently asked a question and I wanted to record, uh, record some thoughts about it. So I just pulled out my phone and I just recorded a video sharing a particular insight. And then I posted that video 
uh, on, on YouTube and Facebook and people liked it. And so I thought, gosh, okay, um, maybe I'll do it again. And so on my, the next day on my dog walk, I pull out the, the phone and I just, again, recorded a very casual video talking about something that I thought would be useful to my clients and to my audience. And again, people loved it. And so that has become a regular way for me to create content. I did that for 100 videos last year. Um, and now I'm creating videos in a bit more of a formal sense so that they can be included in courses. Um, but uh, I still occasionally do my dog walk videos. And uh, so anyway, which one of these five methods works for you on a scale of zero to 10? Uh, rank each one. And then I invite you to make a plan to, to use that natural way of creating content so that you can do more content creation in your business, in your life. I, I tell you, you will find yourself growing. Remember, content creation isn't just about attracting new clients and building an audience and all that. A lot of times I post content and it only gets a few views. Uh, it only gets a few likes. And that's okay. And I'm going to talk more about the, um, my content process going forward. But really, remember, creating content is you creating content is as much for you and for your client as it is for the rest of the world. So when you create content, you benefit your own expertise by organizing your ideas and practicing your voice, whether it's or your writing voice or your speaking voice. And secondly, you can share that content with your clients and with your friends and your colleagues. To benefit them okay so it's benefiting the people that you share it with you may get a few views on YouTube may get a few views on Facebook that's a bonus extra okay so I hope that this is beneficial let me know in this take a you know make a comment on this video if you'd like and let me know which of the methods that I've talked about feel most natural for you or if there's another method that's natural for you to create content that I didn't talk about I'd love to know as well